So one of the things that I enjoy doing is sharing with you guys excerpts from sermons that have an impact on me. Yesterday I was watching a sermon by Vodi. The title of that sermon is Above All Earthly Powers, Courage for Christ in the Public Square. And the link for that sermon will be in the description of this video if you'd like to watch it. And I want this piece that I'm about to share with you to be an encouragement to many of you who may be dealing with persecution at your jobs, within your families, and just in life in general. Vodi perfectly displays the cost of following Jesus Christ in a way that encourages the believer. This is where we live, people. This is where we live. I know there are many of you who on your jobs, you've been told, don't use that name. Some of you may have even been reprimanded for using that name. And, and here you are, you're forced supposedly to choose between your your job and your sustenance and feeding your family and, and using that name. And the temptation in that moment is to say, listen, I will do the same thing. I will say the same thing. I will just tiptoe around the name. Earlier on, Peter has a word that we need to hear, beginning in verse 8. Remember the question in verse 7, by what power and by what name did you do this? Verse 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By the way, all he asked for was a name. <laughs> Amen. That, that's all. That's all. They, that's all they asked. So we just asked for a name. We just asked for a name. But Peter says, I want to make sure you get the right one. Because he's not the only person named Jesus. I want to make sure that you know which Jesus I'm talking about. And I want to make sure that you understand why, why this name is significant. Why Jesus' name is significant. Because here's the thing. You can use the name without using the name. You can use the name in the midst of this culture that just sees Jesus as, as a good man and good teacher and good prophet and is glad to hear the sayings of Jesus next to the sayings of, of Gandhi, next to the sayings of Muhammad or whomever else. That's fine if you use it that way. Uh-uh. Peter says, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. He's not done. This Jesus, not another Jesus, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That's the name. Amen. So that's the context here of verse 18. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Notice what they didn't say. They didn't say stop healing people. They didn't say stop doing good to people. They didn't say, and they wouldn't say, shut down the soup kitchen, close the orphanage. Stop the recovery meetings. They didn't say that and they wouldn't say that because all of that is fine.
Verse 19. But Peter and John answered them, well, we'll just witness with our lifestyle. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. Submission to authority. Submission to authority. You do what you got to do. But we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Let me translate that for you. called him in and said, do not speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus anymore. And Peter said, nah. <laughs> what do you do with that kind of boldness? Verse 21. I love, I just, this is like my favorite. This, 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 makes the, this makes the text for me. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all were praising God for it happened. For the man on whom the sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. Uh, that first phrase. And when they had further threatened them. They let them go. Don't preach in the name of Jesus. Do you understand me? Nah. They, they said no. They let them go. Okay, all right. Stop preaching in the name of Jesus or we'll take everything you own. <laughs> really? Because we already gave away all our stuff and shared it among the brethren. <laughs> they, they got no. Stop preaching in the name of Jesus or we'll put you in jail. You mean like Peter was in jail and the angel got him out. <laughs> Stop preaching in the name of Jesus or we'll kill you. You mean like you did him before he rose again on the third day? How do you threaten a dead man? 